Good morning, everyone, and a happy Sabbath to all. It is a pleasure to be here with you on this beautiful Sabbath morning. And um, just before we begin, uh, we'll sing a song. Whisper a prayer in the morning. Whisper a prayer at noon. Whisper a prayer in the evening to keep your hearts in tune. Let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you and praise you for who you are in our lives. We want to say thank you for allowing us to have another beautiful Sabbath morning. As we're about to study your lesson, I pray that you send your Holy Spirit, Lord, and that you be with us and be with everyone watching. May you, um, you know, watch over each and every one of us. We thank you and praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, David, I see Kada, Kevin, um, Angelville. Who else did I miss? I see um, Angelville. Oh, who else did I see? Um, okay, good morning to all of you. Um, so I hope everyone had a great week. And we will be, um, uh, I see David also, and um, and I see, uh, I don't know which which one of, uh, if it's uh, Carino or Verdi or, um, you know, I don't know which one of you, but welcome everyone. And um, again, it is a pleasure to be here with you on this Sab Sabbath morning. I hope everyone had a great week. And as we, um, you know, Geraldine is here. Good morning, Geraldine. Um, you know, so as we uh, are about to study, um, I know today is, uh, oh, Vanessa is here. Good morning. Uh, I know we are, uh, today is uh, Lubin's, um birthday and so you know we we want to say happy birthday to him and for those of you who are on time what I want you to do I know you guys know my self my um, cell phone I would like um, you know for us to go through and um, you know we'll talk about uh, you know cash apping you for those of you who are on time if everyone has cash app okay so um, definitely, I want you guys to um, inbox me your um, cell phones, and you know how to reach me for those of you who are in my class. And this is for people who are in my Sabbath school class only at End Time Sabbath Worship Center. Um, you know, because we know that um, you know we have gifts, so that's what I wanted to make sure. Okay, so we can do that. All right, so. Again, another exciting lesson. Uh, we are um, studying from um, the, this quarter, making friends for God, and it's been an exciting lesson. And we've I've learned a lot, and I hope that you also have learned a lot. And we are on lesson number six, unlimited possibilities. Wow, guys! As as I did the lesson, um, you know this this morning um stella okay good morning uh you know so many of you good morning to all of you and uh you know as we um you know go through this lesson it's it's really exciting and i hope that you find your um you know your peace in this and uh you know and see um anyways let's go through the lesson and then we'll we'll talk if you guys have any questions or comments please make them this morning i'm only on facebook live because i a lot of you requested that i go on zoom
but about two or three of you get on Zoom. So, you know, and I don't get to see the comments on uh, Facebook Live when I'm on Zoom. So if you, all of you want Zoom, please, um, you know, send me a message through this Facebook Live if you want me to mostly be on Zoom or, um, you know, if you want me to be on Facebook, you know, live, um, you know, so, you know, let me know and then we'll go from there, okay? Wonderful. All right, our memory text is, but one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he will. Um, and that's found in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 11. And it's, uh, it says this week's lesson, okay, surveys the the topic of spiritual gifts in the Bible. Many Christians have practical questions about gifts of the spirit. I know I have had, you know, questions. What is, you know, it's like, what is that? What is gifts, you know, of the Holy Spirit? What are spiritual gifts? You know, this is um, one of the questions that, you know, maybe you've had and I know I've had. Are they reserved for just a few super Christians? Do you have to be perfect to, um, you know, again, super, a super Christian to receive spiritual gifts? Are they uh, for every believer? How do I discover my spiritual gifts? What is the purpose of these spiritual gifts? I don't know if you've ever had any of these questions, but I'm sure that some of you have had them because I have. And, uh, you know, and a lot of us are, are the same about having questions about, you know, our spiritual gifts. And it says, um, spiritual gifts are intimately linked to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The reason, okay, scripture calls them spiritual gifts is because they are gifts, abilities, or talents imparted by the Holy Spirit to each believer okay, for the glory of God, huh, so it's, the spiritual gifts are not just to super Christians, but it's, it's uh, given to each and every single believer, okay, for the glory of God, this is the secret, to the glory of God and for the glory of God, spiritual gifts are given by the Spirit, not to glorify ourselves, okay, they are not to be used in selfish um, exhibitionism to show how talented we are, um, you know, or to draw attention to ourselves. Rightly understood, all the gifts, okay, imparted by the Holy Spirit are given for two essential purposes. I want you to know this. Most of the gifts imparted by the Holy Spirit are given for two essential purposes. First one, to nurture or strengthen the body of Christ, okay, um, and to fulfill the mission of Christ and reaching the world with the gospel. So the two essential purposes is what? To nurture and strengthen the body of Christ, which is the church, your church, wherever you are, okay, and okay, to, um, you know, and to fulfill the mission of Christ and reaching the world with the gospel for us to go out and minister to others and to the world. And um, I think that is so exciting that, uh, you know, God doesn't send us out there like that. But once we, we are willing, he gives, he grants us gifts and, um, you know, of the Holy Spirit that we can go out and do his bidding. Spiritual gifts are imparted to each believer. Um, so I cannot say, you know, well, um, I'm not this perfect Christian or I'm not that good. And so, you know, God is, is, you know, has spared me and has not given me any gifts. No, it's given to every believer. These, But it's going to depend on what you do with, with those gifts. Um, these gifts have different functions. In Christ, everyone has equal value, okay, but we do not have the same roles or the same gifts. And, um, you know, in the lesson this week, it talked about, you know, it doesn't matter if we are Greek, if we are Jew, if we are poor or rich, if we are slaves or free, 
you know, and uh, that illustration has been used, you know, uh, for, oh, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Yes, under God, all of us are equal, and it doesn't matter where we come from, what we are, you know, it doesn't really matter in Christ. But culturally and things like that, these things, they do matter. That you know where you are from, who you are. I think that's very important. So sometimes we take that test, that test um, out of context. And so, you know, uh, we need to be, you know, again, that's my opinion. But, you know, definitely, you know, when we say it, the Bible says, yes, it does spiritually. It doesn't matter where you come from, what color you are. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter because we all are equal in Jesus's eyes, but it's good to know where you come from, what, you know, and, and things like it needs to know where, um, you know, who we are. It says, um, you know, but we do not have the same roles or the same gifts. Ha. Um, this diversity of gifts strengthens the church and empowers its witness to the world. These differences are a strength and not a weakness. So I don't have the same gifts you have. You don't have the same gifts I have. Um, but we might have some similar gifts. But guess what? All this is done to strengthen the church, not to weaken. And, um, you know, so we, we need to understand that. And you know what? And it's it's really nice because sometimes we, you know, some people are jealous of other people's spiritual gifts. So maybe you are the best singer and God has blessed you with singing. And then with me, he has blessed me maybe with speaking. And so I can't sing, but I can speak. And so I don't have to be jealous of you because you can sing. And you don't have to be jealous of me because I can speak. Or vice versa. Maybe, you know, I, I make friends easily and, and you don't. Whatever gifts that you and I have, it's to complement each other, not for us to um, be jealous and, and things like that. So very important. Okay. It is the Holy Spirit who chooses which gift to impart to each believer. Amen. Based on his or her background, culture, and personality and light of felt needs and the church community. So it's, you know, God will, is he's so awesome that he's going to give me, uh, you know, my gift, uh, my spiritual gifts according to, you know, who I am, my personality, uh, you know, and, and all of that. So I think that's great. He will not give you something that you cannot use. He will, he, he is willing to impart everyone with, and bestow upon everyone special gifts that you will be able to use to his glory and not to yours. And this is what is so um, important about all of this and that we can um, help our church community and our community as a whole. Okay, the Holy Spirit knows best which gifts to give that will bring satisfaction and Christ's service and the greatest blessing to the church and the world. Amen. You know, so it's um it's really important, guys, that as we study the lesson, that we understand each other's gifts, that we understand our gifts, okay, and that all of it needs to be used to the glory of God. Good morning, Jason. Um, okay. Witnessing is not a spirit, is not a special spiritual gift that only a select few possess. Witnessing is the divine calling of each Christian. And so I might not be called to be an apostle or a prophet or all of that, but wherever you are, guys, you are a witness and you have to understand that. So are you being the best witness that you can be for Christ? So where you are, um, you know, are you, are you being a witness? And so it's not like, well, you know what? I'm too shy, but whether you are shy or not, if you are in school, if you are at home, wherever you are, you are a witness. And so the Bible uses different expressions to describe our calling before God. We are to be the light of the world. Amen. Ambassadors for Christ. Can you imagine? Um, you know, each of us are ambassadors. We have special titles 
and nobody needs um, you know to envy somebody else we are all ambassadors for Christ okay we are a royal priesthood amen and found in Matthew 5 verse 14 this same God who calls us to witness and for service equips us for the task he imparts spiritual gifts to each believer amen Okay, God does not call the qualified. He qualifies those whom he has called. I love this, this quote, okay? God does not call the qualified, but he qualifies, okay, those whom he has called. So all you and I have to do is answer yes, and then we, we are um, in training, okay? So you just think about that. Um, you know, just like for if you go for a job interview and they, they said, you know, do you have experience? Do you have this and that? And you're like, well, no, I don't. You know what? With this, as being a Christian, all you have to do is just be willing. And God does not, um, you know, give you a call, you know, call the qualifies. But once you said, okay, I'm willing, he qualifies you for you to be in his service. Amen. Um, and I hope you find satisfaction in that. Okay. Um, it says, um, God, okay. As we consecrate ourselves to God and dedicate our lives to his service, our possibilities, um, you know, to serve are endless, endless when it means endless, endless. And, and it's really true. Okay. There is no limit to the usefulness of of one who putting aside self, okay, makes room for the working of the Holy Spirit upon his heart and uh, and lives, okay, um, and lives a life wholly consecrated to God. And that's found in Elenji right, the ministry of healing. Um, you know, we have, on Sunday's lessons, we have different gifts. Uh, and, and we see it to the disciples of, of Jesus. We have uh, you know, the, all the disciples were from different backgrounds and, uh, you know, different line of work, but God used all of them and he found purpose in all of them. And, um, he needed all of them just like he needs all of us to, um, you know, to do what, what we need to do. And it says, uh, you know, the, the disciples having those different backgrounds was not, um, you know, a, a disservice, but God designed it that way, okay? Um, their background, their personalities, their temperaments and gifts greatly varied. For example, uh, Matthew was a tax collector. He was precise, exact, accurate, and contrast, Peter often spoke quickly, okay? He was a, a, a firecracker and was enthusiastic and impulsive against the person, you know, the different personalities. Peter um, was an expressive, where Matthew was, um, you know, analytical. And um, John, okay, was tender-hearted but outspoken. Uh, Andrew, okay, was a people person, extremely aware of his surroundings and sensitive to others. Thomas had the natural inclination to question, and he often doubted. You know, each of these disciples had different, um, you know, again, personalities and, and things like that, but Jesus was going to use each and every one. So, you know, it doesn't matter. Like you might say, you know, I'm too shy to be in service, or I don't like to speak, or I don't like this. But guess what, guys? It doesn't really matter how small you are or um, you know how how much older you are or what your personality type um, God will impart his spiritual gifts upon you that he can use to his service just like he did for the disciples you know and and um, and first Corinthians uh, 12 okay verse 12 and 13 and the question go what do we discover in these verses about the need for people of different gifts in the body of Christ, which is the church. And in 1 Corinthians um, 12, verse 12, it says, for, the, for by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, 
whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and um, you know, free and have all been made to um, you know to drink into one spirit. So it doesn't really matter where you are from, what you do. We all have been called, you know, uh, oh, to be of one spirit, which is you know the Holy Spirit. Uh, so it's it's really um, great. The next one is First uh, Corinthians, um, you know, twelve verse eighteen to twenty two. It says God has set the members in the body just as he um, he pleased. Okay, many members but one body. Okay, um, I cannot say to the um, to the hand, I have no need for you, nor the head you know, to the feet. So we have one body, right? One body. I, now I'm, I'm, God has blessed me. I'm able to look at you. I have my nose to smell, my mouth to speak, uh, my hands to move, to touch, to hold, uh, my head, you know, my, to think, my, uh, my neck to turn the head. Every, we have one body, different members. So it's the church. God has you know, the one body, the church, but different, um, different function, different spiritual gifts. So each of us have been called for different things. So if I pull my nail out right now, we don't consider the nail too much, but it's nice, right? My nails are nice, but if I pull it out, it's going to hurt. So every part of our body is necessary to this whole body. If, you know, if I said, okay, my pinky, I don't need it anymore, and I cut it off, is it going to hurt? Am I going to miss it? Yes. And so is the church, guys. Um, you know, we all have been called, um, you know, where we all are different, but we're all part of that one body. And we, you know, we, I cannot say, you know, my feet is, is not important. I need it to walk. Um, my toenail is important. So, um, you know, if my eyelashes are not there, guess what? All the dust, it catches all the dust particles from going into my eyes. So if you don't have that, you know, so what I'm trying to say, okay, and the lesson is saying is that no one is too small in the church, okay, for God's service, and no one is too great. We are all needed. We all have different functions. And God wants us to know that. And so a lot of times, you know, we feel that, you know, we are not adequate enough. We are, um, you know, we, for whatever reason, yes, you all are important. I know, for example, let's say I'm speaking to you now, but you know what? I didn't know how to do Facebook Live. I had to, so that wasn't my gift. Technology is not my gift, but... It's Kevin's gift. It's Belle's gift. So they have to help me. So, you know, it's, it, again, we all have different gifts and God imparts it on us that we can get to his glory and that we can get his work done. Okay. God delights in taking people of different backgrounds, right? With different talent and abilities and imparting to them gifts for service. The body of Christ is not a homogeneous um, group of people who are all alike. And um, the word homogeneous is, um, you know, same kind. So we're not a whole bunch of eyes. You know, can you imagine all of us are eyes looking at each other? Uh, no, or we all are not, you know, mouth. But everybody, you know, is, is, is different. And so it's beautiful. Um, it is a dynamic movement of people of different gifts united in their love for Christ, okay, and for scripture, and who are committed to sharing his love and truth with the world. Amen. The members of the body of Christ have different gifts, but each one is valuable. Each one is critical to the healthy functioning of the body of Christ. Just as the eyes, again, I will reiterate, ears and nose have different functions, but are necessary to the body. Um, all gifts are necessary as well. And I want you to understand that as you are watching right now, that all of you are important. It doesn't matter how small you think 
uh, you know, that your function, you know, like, oh, maybe I'm not that important. Yes, you are. You are so important. If all you can do is smile, can you imagine walking in and you had a bad day and you meet this person with this most beautiful smile, it just warms your heart. Maybe that's your gift, just to smile, but you are needed because you are that face that people are looking for. Your gift of smile, the gift of, um, you know, maybe just seeing people's needs. You know, so each of us have different gifts. And I that's why I don't want you to... Um, minimize your gift or to say, you know what, I am not important. I might as well, you know, forget it. No, each and every one of us are important. Okay. And again, you know, as we mentioned about the eyelashes, okay. Um, you know, it's like the, the member of the church who seems the most ins insignificant is an essential part of the body of Christ and has been gifted by the Holy Spirit when we dedicate these gifts totally to God, guys, when everything we have, we totally dedicate everything to God, okay? Each one of us can make an eternal difference. Where you are, you can make a difference. And don't you let anybody come and say, oh, you know what? Um, you know, you're not important. Yes, you are. Um, you might not be important to that person, but to Christ you are. And I don't want you, uh, you know, to allow someone uh, you know, cause again, let, let's go back a little bit, you know, just like you have the, these gifts in the church, there's some people that they're gifted by the devil. Okay. That their only goal is to rob you of your spiritual gift in the church and to discourage you. And, you know, maybe they're the ones, you know, they don't, you know, the enemy is in the church. And they don't want, you know, the enemy doesn't want us to, to remain in church. So what do they do? Maybe somebody, you know, comes and, you know, is bad-mouthing you. Um, instead of, you know, um, you know, using that, that uh, ability to gossip, you know, to talk about Christ, they're using it to gossip and, you know, to, for the devil. So, you know, we need to be very careful. Of, and this is why we need to be in prayer. We need to be... I'm asking God for wisdom, for discernment, for good judgment, that we are not um, instruments, that we don't become instruments in the hands of the devil. So instead of using our gifts for the advancement of God's work, we are um, using our gifts to take people out of God's work, okay? And, um, you know, woe to somebody who is allowing the enemy to use them you know, for that. So as you see me speaking and maybe, you know, you know, all the critics, oh, what is this woman talking about? Oh, get her out of, out of here. She doesn't look, look at her clothes. Look at this, look at that. Who cares? I am doing this to the glory of God. This is what I want you to understand. Whatever you find to do, you do it and you do it to the glory of God. And if somebody tries to come and discourage you, in the name of Jesus, you need to rebuke them and say, get thee away from me, Satan, and that you can remain and you can get your gifts. And we will go over the, that parable and, um, you know, a little bit later. And I'm like, wow, you know, so be very careful how, um, how you are using your gifts. You can be using it for God or for the other side. And we are in, in, on Jesus' side. That's the side that... I am in and I want you to be in. It doesn't really matter what other people think about you, but what does Jesus think about you? What does Jesus think about Junan? Is Junan um, walking in the light of Christ? This is what really matters. It doesn't really matter what other people's opinions are of me or what they think. But, you know, I want to know what does God think of Junan? And, um, you know, and to be in his purpose and to walk in his purpose and to use my gifts for his purpose. This is what really, really matters, guys. Okay, the giver of all good gifts in Monday's lesson. God is the originator of all gifts and every perfect gift comes from him. Amen. Okay, he will impart to us the very gifts of the Holy Spirit that are best suited for our personalities. And he will best use our skills to serve his cause and glory and glorify his name. You know, I, um, I remember 
um, when I used to sing with evangelistic team singers, okay, ETS, it, um, you know, I was, um, you know, I used to sing with my sisters. We were called the J sisters, uh, you know, since we were teenagers in Massachusetts. And, uh, you know, but, you know, my sister Julia is really a great singer. Um, you know, she's a great soprano. And so for me, they would have me stand next to my sister Juliet because if I, whoever I stand next to, once I sing, I go into their part. So it's like my voice was very unstable. So if, if I, you know, whoever I, I'm standing next to, I start, I start singing like them and maybe going off tone. So when I, um, you know, when I started singing with evangelistic team singers, you know, I was a soprano and um, a second soprano. And I, you know, I would go off sometimes. So that's why they would put me, you know, in the middle of, uh, you know, of the people singing. But I started praying for God to give me the gift of singing. And, um, you know, because... I really, you know, sometimes people would laugh. And um, and so I, I started asking God for that gift. I said, Lord, can you help me um, sing? I would like to sing to your glory. So I remember going to Thayer, um, which is, you know, the music school at, at Atlantic Union College, um, my former school. And I, you know, I took four voice lessons, learning how to breathe and things like that. Cause I was, you know, I had, I was busy. I was already, you know, I had my first child and I was working and singing and, you know, using all my gifts for, um, you know, at church as youth leader and all of that. And so I realized that when I, and you know, they asked me to sing once I, um, I was singing for God's glory and to perform, then I can sing. And so God gave me the gift, but only when I perform for him. If I'm singing with everybody, you're going to go, what does she sound like? But if I stand up to perform to the glory of God, then I can sing. And so, you know, I, I, I feel humbled that, you know, um, and when I am about to perform, I always have like, it's almost like I have a frog in my throat to remind me that it's not about Junon. It's about the glory of God. So if God gives you the gift, don't take it and like, it, oh, it's, it's me. You know, I am gifted with this. No, everything that you have, every gift that you have needs to be used to the glory of God. And, um, until today. When I have to perform, I can sing, but if I'm just singing like this, you will see that, you know, sometimes whoever sends next to me, I sing like them and I go off, you know, and this is how funny God is. Once he gives us, you know, he, the, the gifts, it again, it's to his glory. And so for us not to think it's all about us. And I want you to remember that. And it says, to whom does God give spiritual gifts? You know, what do you have to do? Guess what, guys? Um, and First uh, Corinthians twelve verse eleven, it says God gives us to, gives everyone a spiritual gift. And um, you know, so in Mark thirteen verse thirty four, it says, um, you know, uh, it talks about, um, you know, the parable. And I love this parable. It says, you know, the master leaves his house, right? And um, you know, he gives everybody work to do. So, you know, to this one, he gives five, okay? Um, you know, to, to this one, he gives two. To this one, he gives one. And the one that he gives five talents, what does he do? He takes that talent and he uses it to the glory of God and it gets multiplied. He gets more. And to the one he gives two, he also does great things with it and he multiplies it and he gets two more. So he gets four. So one, the one he gave five gets 10. The one he gave two get, gets uh, four. And the one he gave one, what does he do? He takes it and he hides it. And so the master comes back and says, okay, guys, um, you know, what have you done with your gifts? And the one with the five says here, uh, you know, I have done this and I've multiplied it. 
and it's it's now ten. And the one he gave to, it's now four. And the one he gave one says, you know what? I know you are a bad master, so I have taken that gift and I hid it underground for you. So here's your gift. And so, guys, we do the same thing. Um, you know, in this story, I realize that God doesn't give everyone the same gifts. He gives us different gifts, and he gives some people, he gives many gifts. So he probably gives you the gift of singing, the gift of speaking, the gift of getting things done, the gift of leadership, the gift of teaching, the gift of prophecy. He gives you different gifts. And what are you doing with these gifts? Are you using them to his glory? Maybe, um, you know, you have the gift of service or maybe the gift of cooking or maybe, you know, whatever gifts. There's so many gifts, guys. And so what are you doing with the gifts that he has given you? Are you using them to his glory or are you so busy being jealous of this one who has five gifts? You for, you're forgetting to get the one thing that you have. Maybe you have the gift of um, washing cars or, you know, just, just an example. And so, you know, you're so busy um, watching the people who can speak, those who are teaching. And, you know, you are, you feeling sorry for yourself. Well, how come my gift is to wash, you know, people's cars and not, you know, speak? that you miss out on your gift, you know? As we are utilizing the gifts that God is giving us, he is bestowing more and more upon us. And I want you to understand that the more you give, the more he gives you back. And it's just like, you know, with our tithes and our offerings, the more we give God, the more he gives you. You know, it doesn't really, um, you know, matter. And some people have the gift of giving. Maybe you don't have the gift of giving, but I cannot criticize you for having the gift of giving. And then guess what? If you have the gift of giving, the more you give is the more God gives you to give because you have the gift of giving, guys. Instead of saying, you know what? I need to put my money in the bank, you know, for, for um, you know, for uh, time that is coming. But, you know, that's, this is, this is you. So if I have the gift of giving and you don't, don't be jealous of that. You know, just pray for me. Maybe you need to give me to give more, you know, instead of bad mouthing me and saying, you know, and maybe you can get that gift too. So again, you know, what are you doing with the gifts that God has given you? And, um, you know, and stop watching, be, you know, looking, you know, around and, you know, to see what, um, you know, what the others are doing. Some people, you know, like, have you ever seen somebody, you know, everybody can call that person and they're willing to give them a ride to church, but not everyone has that gift, guys. So if that's your gift, praise the Lord. This is your gift. You know, you, you take pleasure in bringing people different places and driving people around. Um, that's a gift because if you don't have that gift, it becomes a nuisance to you. Um, instead of, you know what? Yes, I'm willing to give you a ride to church. No problem. What time should I pick you up? That's a spiritual gift right there. So, you know, I want you guys to understand what spiritual gifts are. And maybe you, you're, you know, some of you are, are young people and, you know, maybe you're in your teens and you say, what kind of gifts that I have? You know what? Maybe I'm smiling or helping the elderly and the church. Um, you know, maybe, uh, you know, it's raining outside and you're willing with your umbrella to go uh, pick up the people that are, you know, coming, getting out of their cars. That's the gift of service. So wherever you are, whatever you do, maybe it's to be, you know, a, a deacon and training at church or, or um, you know, you're willing to do scripture reading. You're willing to do something. That's a gift. Um, you know, and some people are just... Um, you know, gifted with willing to do anything that needs to be done. So I want you to understand that, um, you know, we all have different gifts. Um, you know, uh, there is an assignment for every individual and God gives spiritual gifts to all to accomplish the divine task of, um, or ministry that they are called to. When we surrender our lives to Christ and through baptism, okay, become members of his body, okay? So we how do we become members of, um, you know, the body of Christ? Through baptism, okay? Each of you, when you get baptized, what they say, welcome to the body of Christ, okay? Um, 
uh, through baptism, right? Um, and when we surrender our lives to Christ, okay, and we become members, the church, the Holy Spirit imparts gifts so that we can serve the body and witness in the world. So this is really great, guys. So just like when Jesus got baptized, you know, what happened? The Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove. And what did God says? This is my son that I am well pleased in. And so with you, God, every, you know, when we become that member in the body of Christ, God definitely bestows spiritual gifts on us. But you know what? I want you to understand that as you get the gifts, the spiritual gifts, the enemy is constantly trying to take you out of the church. Always trying to take certainly young people, guys. You guys are so gifted. Like, you know, like I'm getting old. So, you know, I need to be helping you. You you guys need to be doing this, you know, um, teaching each other. And you probably can reach a generation that I cannot. So, you know, you need to to accept your gift instead of saying, you know what, I can't do this. Yes, you can. I, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Um, who would say that I would be on Facebook Live right now? You, all of you know, you know, I teach at church, but you know, I just, you know, um, stay in my little corner. I, I don't make much noise. But you know what? With COVID, God has totally changed things. And, um, you know, so I only got on Facebook just for my class, my Sabbath school class at church. And, you know, what God uses, whatever he wants. And now there's more than what we were like. Um, we started with how many at church with like 10 and we grew to about 30. But now on the Sabbath, you know, we, we, we have grown people. Some other people are watching from other places. So God uses whatever God does, whatever he wants. And he uses our gifts and um, that he imparts, you know, and, and us, that he bestows upon us to his glory. So if I was here, you know, so what am I doing? Am I using, um, you know, God's gifts for his glory or am I, you know, glorifying myself? So I need to watch what I do and the motive behind, you know, what I am doing. So am I here, you know, just to ooh, glorify Janan? Oh, 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 you know, Janan. No, it's to glorify God and to be, to just allow God to use me and to use you as an instrument for the, for the advancement of his work. And if we have the tendency to want glory for ourselves, we need to ask God for humility. God, please grant me the humility that I need that I can be used because God cannot use somebody with pride because it's then it doesn't become about God anymore. It becomes about you. So if I have the tendency or if you have the tendency to want to be prideful, we need to ask God to say, Lord, please, uh, you know, use me to your glory and take this pride away from me. Okay. And so, um, you know, very, very important, guys. As we um, use our gift, maybe your gift is the gift of, um, you know, of uh, medical. So, you know, somebody comes to church and, you know, you know how many elderly they don't, you know, maybe they don't have insurance or, you know, they, they can't, they don't get their blood pressures checked or their blood sugars checked. But maybe that's your gift. So when these people come to church, maybe being able to offer that at church. You know what, Can bring your, if you're a nurse or a medical doctor or whoever you are, a nurse's aide, you know, an, an LPN, maybe bringing that to church and saying, you know what, I'd like to check your blood pressure for those who want to and maybe check your blood sugar. You don't know, you might be saving many, many lives because maybe they don't even know they suffer from blood pressure or blood sugar. So that's a gift, you know, using your natural talent, okay, um, for as a gift, as a spiritual gift to advance and further God's work, okay? Um, spiritual gifts serve several purposes. God gives them to people so they can nurture and strengthen his church, again, to accomplish his ministry, okay? They are um, designed to develop a unified church ready to accomplish his mission in the world. So just like I said, if I am not a medical doctor and somebody is 
a church than their medical doctor, but I'm a business person. Maybe I can help them with some issues or I'm, I'm, a, I'm a real estate broker. So I can help them with, with you know, if they're having some issue with, with their house or maybe they're going into foreclosure, I can help them with that. I'm, I also work as a person in the cemetery. So I can, you know, help with that. I don't have to be jealous of the medical doctor or the nurse. We each have functions. So God is using each and every one of us to use our natural talents that he has given us in the secular world, okay, to use our talents in the church as a spirit, you know, as a spiritual gift. So again, we each have different, we each are different. We can be used differently, but we are all important. And um, and I want you guys to, to know that. Now, talking about talents, okay, here we go. Spiritual gifts, okay, I want you to understand the difference. Spiritual gifts are divinely imparted qualities that are given by the Holy Spirit to each believer to equip them for their special ministry in the church and service in the world. Again, spiritual gifts, okay, are divinely given, okay, that you know, um, you know, to equip us, okay, for us, for the ministry and the church and service in the world, okay? They may also include natural talents, okay, um, that are sanctified by the Holy Spirit and used in service for Christ, okay? Um, all natural talents are God-given, but not all are used in the service of Christ. Does that make sense? Spiritual gifts all are used and you know for for um, for ministry or for the furthering of God's work in the world. Some of um, spiritual gifts, some of our spiritual gifts uses our ta uh, God-given talents to to uh, you know to do that. But natural talent, some of us are naturally talented. Um, you know, they are all given by God. All our talents are given by God, but not all are used in the service of Christ. I want you to understand that. Again, another gift, a natural talent might be, you know what, I'm a fashion designer. Um, I mean, I'm just using that. I might know how to sew. So what am I doing with that natural talent? Am I hiding it from the church? Or can I teach it to some young people in the church? Um, you know, how to sew, maybe how to hem their own pants, or, um, you know, maybe somebody doesn't know, you know, how to, um, you know, hem a skirt, or maybe, you know, they, a button falls off, instead of me having to take it to, uh, you know, to wherever, maybe somebody can sew it for me, or maybe you can teach me how to do it. So how am I using my natural talent for, you know, in the church, and the body of Christ? So not all of it. I might be a seamstress, but I, I don't use any of my talents in the church. I, but I, I might use my talent. I'm a seamstress by trade, but I might be using, um, you know, my talent, the, the gifts of speaking in the church. So whatever it is, you know, we need to ask God to help us use our natural talent to further his work and, you know, the spiritual gifts that are bestowed upon us. Um, you know, to, to use it to his glory and to further his work. Um, it says that God, in the bottom of Tuesday's lesson, it says, God has established such special gifts as the gift of prophecy in specific offices in the church, including pastors, elders, and teachers who are teachers within the body of Christ to nurture and equip member for service, each member for service. Okay, the function of all church leadership is to assist each member in discovering their spiritual gifts and teach them to use these gifts to build up the body of Christ. Guys, this is what, you know, it's finding your gift and then using it to the glory of God and for the, you know, for furthering God's, um, God. maybe your gift, guys, is to share um, some of you, it might be, you know what, by clicking on share this, this Sabbath school lesson, 
You don't, do you know who it's going to reach? You don't know. But by sharing it, you know, because some people said, I don't want to share anything, you know, or, you know, maybe sharing a word or sharing a, a pamphlet, whatever you're sharing. Some people, that's their gift. They love to share. So they share videos, they share a pamphlet, they share whatever. Other people are like, I'm not sharing anything. I don't want people to know what I'm watching. I don't want to, you know what? what are you using your spiritual gifts? And maybe, you know, that's not yours, but if it is yours, this might, this might be it. So I want you guys to understand that. Okay, God promises that his church will manifest all of the gifts of the Holy Spirit just before the return of our Lord. Amen. Guys, are you ready to be, um, you know, to be rained on, um, you know, with so many spiritual gifts, uh, you know, to use it to the glory of God, um, you know, and um, he has given us the witness of the Holy Spirit in our hearts to guide each of us an understanding, okay, of the gifts he has given to us. It is God who gives the gifts, okay, and God through his spirit who reveals them to us. So God gives us the gifts, and then God also sends his Holy Spirit that we can understand what our gifts are. So if you don't know what your gifts are, you need to ask. You know, you have not because you ask not. So you can ask God for, for your gift. I don't care how small you are. Makai, you might be 13. Somebody else might be 14, 15. But we each have gifts, guys. Maybe your gift is to help your parents be better parents. So if you are, a, uh, you know, a great child, you know, and, and you know what? Maybe you are that example to other children instead of following them. And disrespecting your parents, your gift is to help other kids respect their parents. Because when they see you respect your parents, when they see you do things for your parents, you know what? Maybe I can do it too for my parents. And maybe for the elderly or whoever else. You know what? You, um, what I'm trying to tell you, no matter where you are, God can use you. You know, whether it's at home, whether it's at school, whether it's at church, you know, you, you and I have a great field, um, whether it's at work, what are, are your gifts? Maybe it's to smile. Maybe it's to bring positive energy to your, to your job instead of, you know, walking around like, and you know, you know, what kind of gifts? Maybe you have the gift of, you know, just smile. Um, the gift of encouragement. Some people, you know, they they you know they'll see you. They said, "You know, it's gonna be okay." You know, you know that God loves you. And guess what? That's all you needed to hear for that day. You know what? Yes, I. You know what? Yes, He does love me. And um, you know, so the gift of encouragement. Some of us, that's our gift. We go around and we encourage others. Some are to bless others. So whatever your gift is. You know, use that. And if you don't know, ask God and he will let you know. Okay? Um, we receive the gifts of the Spirit as we consecrate ourselves to God. And ask him to reveal to us the gift he has given us. That, that's what we just talked about. When our hearts are uh, emptied of self-glory and our priority is to serve Jesus... His spirit will impress us with the spiritual gifts he has for us. Wow. So we need to empty ourselves of self-glory. It's not about you. And, you know, sometimes I might not feel like coming on Facebook Live. But guess what? It's not about you, Non. It's about what God is doing through me. Okay? I'm, I'm just an instrument. And the moment I start thinking that this is all about me, guess what? God takes that gift away. You're out. You know, so you and I need to know what, um, you know, what types of gifts we have and what are we using them for. It's not about self. It's not about, you know, um, you know, whoa, let everybody see who I am. No, it's about, it's all to God's glory. And are you doing that? Um, you know, and if you're not, you know what? And this is what I love about my God. God takes us where we are. There's no reason that you can say, you know what, I've been bad and I, this has been to, for myself glory. No. Where you are, God will take you and, and put you right there. Okay, Junan, I, I understand. Now, 
I want to use you to my glory. And, um, and I want you to understand that, that it, it's okay. You know, we are all a work in progress. None of us are perfect. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And God wants to use you and me where, where, where you are for his glory and to his glory, guys. And, um, you know, so I, I want you to understand that. You know, some people have gifts of sympathy. You know, you know, um, those that are mourning and, you know, it's like we're naturally, we have such a soothing spirit that when we sit there, we just bring comfort. Um, you know, so that's a gift to bring comfort to those that are hurting and that are mourning. So do you understand, guys, that, you know, it, it, you might not consider it a spiritual gift, but it is. The smallest thing, God is using it to his glory. Amen. Okay, um, you know, not until through faith and prayer, the disciples had surrendered themselves fully for his working was the outpouring of the spirit received. Then, in a special sense, the, go the goods of heaven were committed to the followers of Christ. The gifts are already ours in Christ, but their actual possession depends upon our reception of the spirit of God. Hmm. Spiritual gifts are qualities that God imparts, okay, so we can serve him effectively. Amen. Um, spirit, the, the Holy Spirit impresses you with some area of service. Pray that he will lead you to a specific ministry to exercise your gift through an outreach activity. Maybe it's prison ministry. Maybe it's nursing home ministry. You love to make the old people, you know, the older folks happy. Whatever it is, it's okay. God has your back, okay? Um, the unfaithful servant, okay, squandered his opportunity to serve and ultimately lost the ability to serve. Again, we went through the talent, you know, the one that had, um, you know, the, the gift, you know, was given the gift. He took it and he hid it and did nothing with it. Okay, so, um, you know, he didn't use that gift, okay? When we use the gifts that God has given us for the glory of his name, they will increase, expand, and grow. Amen. How can you discover the gifts God has given you? Humbly ask God to reveal to you the areas he desires you to serve in for ministry. As he impresses you, get involved. Your gifts will grow as you use them and you will find satisfaction in his service. I want you guys to think about this parable, you know, of the gifts, of the talents. You know, the one that he gave five multiplied it to 10. The one he gave two multiplied it to four. The way, the one he gave one hit it. And then blamed, the, you know, blamed the master that, you know, I didn't use it because you're mean and you're, and I know you're not, you're not, a, you're not nice. So I'm not going to use my gift. How many of us are in that category? You know, God imparts gifts to us. We sit at church. We, all we do is complain. This church is not doing anything. There is this, you know, look at this. What are they doing? No, no. We sit our butts down instead of being part of the solution. So if you see the church is not doing anything and maybe the church is not uh, ministering to young people or to this, what can you do? You know, don't ask what can the church do for you, but what can you do for the church? What can you do for your community? What can you do for your country? Instead of being part of the complainers, be part of the solution. Um, you know, bring some solution. So if you see that your church is boring, well, guess what, guys? What creative ideas can you bring together to, you know, to help church get better? And so some of you go, well, you know, the old folks don't want to listen. You know what? If we pray earnestly, God is going to put favor that they can listen. And you know what? When God sends you, yes, you will meet with opposition. Yes, you will meet with barriers. But guess what? You need to further it. 
Instead of me saying, you know what, all Haitian churches are boring, they don't cater to young people, so you go, you take your service to somebody, to another community, okay, when the other community will not come to your community, but you take your service and your talents and go to another community, and you complaining about this community, okay, but maybe God has you serving where you are or where you need to be in your own community. Just like God might not want you to serve in your community. He might want you to go to another community. So what I'm saying is, is don't complain that, you know what, I'm leaving this church. I'm going to another church. Um, they don't have children's Sabbath school. Well, maybe they don't have children's Sabbath school because you need to be the children's Sabbath school leader so that we can have an exciting Sabbath school class. Huh. Instead of, you know what, I need to go take instead of give. We need to have the spirit of service. We need to have, you know, what can I do to make this better? Um, you know, I, and I was one of them. I remember I said, you know, I'm going to go to this church. But you know what? God wanted me to be in my community and serve my community. So you just need to make sure that you are in alignment with, what God, with the gifts that God has given you. And so, you know, when you take your gifts and go serve somewhere else, you know, and that's not the purpose God had for you, then, you know, I mean, who am I to judge? I can't judge. So, you know, you, and you need to know where God wants you and what he wants you, um, you know, wants you to have. Anyways, as we end, I want to, um, you know, to uh, have a little talk, okay? If the Holy Spirit imparts spiritual gifts to all believers for the a building of God's church and its witness in the world, how can we discover our spiritual gifts? Okay? Here are some steps that you will want to share. Okay? Um, you know, and how do we discover some, our, some of our gifts? Number one, tell God they believe. Okay? He has given them spiritual gifts. Okay? We, we need to tell God that, okay, Lord, I believe you have given me spiritual gifts. And ask him to reveal the gifts. Reveal them to me. He has um, imparted, okay? So please, God, reveal the gifts that you have imparted upon me. Um, scripture reveals every good gift and every per perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. James 1 verse 17. The God that imparts his precious gifts to each one of us will reveal them through his Holy Spirit as we ask him. And that's found in Luke 11 verse 13. And, um, you know, definitely, guys, I know that um, and that's a burden on my heart, you know, certainly with our Haitian community, uh, that most of us are, you know what, I'm done with this community. I'm this, I'm that, I'm leaving. Um, I'm going to another church where they appreciate my talents, where they appreciate that. You know what, God um, sometimes gives us the gift of perseverance. If there's going to be changes, you are going to have to make the changes. Meaning that you can't give up just because somebody looked at you and or maybe somebody says, you know what, or go sit somewhere. You know, um, what do you think? You know, we've done this like this for a hundred years, and who are you to change this now? Guess what? Perseverance, you know, breaks down resistance. You you guys need to be the change. So when you when you are the change. It will happen. And so as you pray, you know, it's just not coming in there as a bulldozer. But when you pray and say, God, you have given me this gift. I want to use it in my community, but they're not receptive. What can I do to, you know, to help them re receive it? And God will show you the way. He will touch the right hearts to help, you know, make his, further his, his work instead of, you know, so many of us, we are, we are leaving our communities and going elsewhere. And a lot of us, they don't, um, we sit, we sit. Instead of using our talents, 
we become sitters like that 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 one believer that just sat on on his talent. You know what? I'm not gonna do anything at church. I'm taking a break this year. I'm taking a break. So who are you taking a break from? From the church or from God? Hmm. Well, I, I'm not taking a break from God. He has the, he's the one who has blessed you with the spiritual gifts. So if you don't use your gifts, who are you taking a break from? Not the church. You're taking a break from God. And guess what? Use it or lose it. So many, and, and it's in everything, guys. It's spiritually and in everything. If you are not using your spiritual gifts, sooner or later, it's going to go away. And if God has given you a gift with children and you're not using it, guess what? It's going to go away. And um, so you need to use your gift where you are. Number two, how do you discover your spiritual gift? Counsel spiritual leaders about how God is leading them and the areas of service that might be available and open for participation. So, uh, you know, consulting with your church leaders or maybe somebody else not from your church. Be as a mentor or a spiritual leader, you know, for you. Uh, so, and then begin using their gifts that God reveals, okay? Be, so you need to begin using the gifts that God has revealed to you. The purpose of the gifts God gives is service. You, you and I have to remember that. It's all about service. As we begin using the gifts that he has given us, our gifts will expand. Amen. Just like the, the one that had five, it keeps expanding. Our abilities will increase. Our spiritual gifts do not come fully developed. We become more effective in our service and our gifts enlarge as we use them. Uh Elen G. White so powerfully states, he who will give himself fully to God will be guided by the divine hand. He may be lowly and apparently ungifted, yet if with a loving, trusting heart, he obeys every ent intimation of God's will, his powers will be purified, ennobled, energized, and his capabilities will be increased. That's found in the Acts. Now, as we use the gifts God has given us, we will find joy, amen, satisfaction, and effectiveness in our service for Christ. Others will confirm our, our giftedness in a particular area, and the church will be blessed, amen. You know, um, I, I, I'll tell you one of the gifts. I, yes, some, uh, to some of you, I, we just had an internet connection. But as I end, I wanted to um, give you guys this, um, this, this story as I end. If, um, if I remember about cooking at church, I, um, you know, people, uh, you know, cooked and I, I love to eat okay so I ate but I wasn't I wasn't um you know a, a big cook you know I can't cook for a lot of people but something happened I remember once there was no cooks for the church because we feed the church every Saturday and there was no one there to um, no one was able to to cook and the, the cook said I can't cook and the Lord told me, you need, you go cook, Juno. And I'm like, I don't know how to cook for all these people, you know, to feed over 100 people. And so I I said, Lord, help me. So I called my sister, Juliet, and I called a friend, Myrna Nash, and I said, you know, we need to cook, and I, I, you know, for all these people. And it was a Friday uh, morning, and I so I decided to cook for all these people because God told me, you cook, because my church needs to have food every Saturday. I need to feed everybody every Saturday. And so I said, well, God, you need to give me a formula, because I can't t make a food that tastes like mush. Um, and so this is what happened. The Lord um, gave me this formula for my, for my rice. And, um, and he says, this is what you need to do. And, just, and he multiplied and says, so... For each of the big pots, this is what you need to use. And so that's what I did. I, The formula that God gave me, I used it. And guys, I swear, 
But on Saturday, people were like, wow, this food tastes good. It had nothing to do with me. I use God's formula. So what I want you guys to understand is, you know, I don't have the gift, but it needed to be used right there and then. And ever since, God has been able to bless me where now I can cook for three, 400 people if I need to, you know, and, and to multiply the recipe. So I want you guys to understand that if you don't have the gift, ask for it. God will give it to you. Um, you know, so this has been, um, you know, my lesson, the lesson uh, for, for today. I hope that you have learned something. And, um, you know, as I try to find what some of my gifts are, as I try to multiply some of my gifts, I hope that you start discovering some of your gifts. And, um, you know, ask God if you don't know what your gifts are. Are there any questions or comments? Please, I'll take a few minutes to write them. Happy Sabbath, Sheila. And hello, Jason. Um, you know, so Makai, I see you. Um, you know, welcome. Are there any um, questions or comments um, this morning? Please write them in the comment section of your Facebook Live. If not, um, then I will, you know, leave you. I, I, I'm thankful to God that you have been able to be here with, with me as we study the Word of God. And may He bestow talent upon me and spiritual gifts that you are, um, you know, and that he keeps multiplying them. So may God be with you. I guess the only question, okay. Um, question, what if you don't know how to use your gifts? Well, uh, that's a great question. Um, Jason, if you don't know how to use your gifts, guess what? This is where, um, you know, if you think you know some of your gifts, so maybe we can have a talk. Um, and you know, that was one of the things in the lesson, speaking to maybe the, the church pastor, maybe speaking to an elder. And you know what? Don't go to anybody. Uh, pray before you go to somebody because you might be going to someone at church talking about your spiritual gifts. And then that person is the wrong person and they take the spiritual gift away from you instead of um, helping you use it. So, you know, remember we're saying that there's, you know, there's the enemy in the church also and, and wherever you are, um, so we need to be careful. So definitely um, being in counsel, maybe we can talk, Jason, and you know what you think some of your gifts are and uh, how can you use your gifts you know, um, to God's glory. You know, um, so that definitely, uh, you know, that. And then ask God, you know, Lord, you, none is too small. Look at Samuel. Samuel was a, a young boy. And he, he, you know, God called him early and he was of service in the temple of God doing whatever he needed to do. If he needed to take out the trash in the men's bathroom, that's what he did. He didn't go, oh, I'm not going to do that work. That's nasty work. But you know what? He used it. And guess what? As he used his gifts of service, God blessed him where he became one of the um, most, um, you know, the best prophets in the world. I mean, in and, and, and the Bible. So definitely, um, you know, he was, he was a servant of the Lord. So if this is what your gifts are, definitely. So we can discuss that more, Jason, but, you know, praying um, about, you know, God, where, you know, what are my gifts? Where do I utilize my gifts? And doing some counseling with some people in church, some elders, some, you know, um, somebody that you trust and that you've prayed about and God will guide you to, to help you develop your gifts. Any other questions for me or comments? Okay, if there's no other comments, well, it's been a real pleasure being with you. Um, I hope you have a blessed Sabbath and I will see all of you uh, for Bible study at five today, okay? And um, so let's have a quick word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for who you are. Thank you for having blessed us and been with us on this beautiful Sabbath morning as we studied your lesson. Father, I pray that you show each and every one of us, Lord, our spiritual gifts, that we can use them to your glory, Lord, and not for our own benefits, but to your benefits. We thank you and praise you. We give you thanks, honor, and glory, Lord. Bless each person watching, Lord. 
has showed them their spiritual gifts, Father, and help them to use it. May we not be like the um, like the servant with one talent, but that we may be the servant with five talents, that we can multiply it and not only make it 10, but 15, that we can triple it or that we can, um, you know, be the one with, with two talents and, and just double it. We thank you, Lord, and praise you. Bless each young person watching. Bless each viewer watching. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a blessed Sabbath, guys. And, um, you know, it was great being with you. All right. Bye-bye.